apology time. I wanna rock! So yes, we're back and I need to apologize. I apologize that I haven't had the content up like I said I was going to. That is changing. Behind this camera now is another human being. Another person to help me get this shit out to you guys because what was happening is there's been some stuff going on in the background with me in terms of some really new exciting stuff, some personal things going on and I let it get a little bit overwhelming, a little bit on top of me. So I ended up trying to do a hundred things and not completing any of them which is a common error too many of us make all the time. So it's a matter of delegating, trimming things down, and doing what's important. And what's important is not creating some really crazy footage, which is what I had planned, I'd like to point out. I was supposed to be going to Portugal, cliff jumping, huge zip wires, riding motorbikes through the mountains, alongside more fight videos with professional boxers, more of the massage videos. It all got kiboshed by COVID. COVID. So, it made me get a little bit down, I'm not gonna lie. I got a little bit kind of in a funk, like, well, what the hell am I gonna do now? I had all this awesome stuff planned. Nothing I can do in my house is gonna match this. That's not what's important. What's important is that I get content out to you guys that helps you. It doesn't have to be Hollywood, it just has to help. And I forgot that, and so I'm sorry. And we're f***ing back. Oh. Coffee's in the morning. If you're not watching me on Instagram stories, I've started putting my morning routines on Instagram and tons of you are joining in with it and it's freaking awesome. So cheers for tuning in. If you haven't, make sure to. Um, and you can also message me on there. And I put out a video on uh, the stories the other day. If you're feeling a little bit shit and you've got no one to talk to, DM me. I literally go through my messages every day. I spend an hour dedicated to it every day going through it because I appreciate you guys supporting me and I like to give a little bit back. So yeah, that's just a little thing. But in terms of getting back on track, under the life thing, wait there. Man stuff. Right. Alongside purchasing some awesome stuff for when I go camping, like this, I'll bring this out. Now, listen, knives aren't cool if you're not using them for purpose. I bought this literally for camping, for cutting meat and cooking when I'm out. This does not get used as any other naughty thing. You know, yes, anyway. This. Right, so silly little things go a long way in life. I like my coffees in the morning. I like things to just look welcoming and all that. Yeah, apparently I always have bubble wrap. Right, when, when you go places, wherever you're wandering around your house, every little bit of your house should make you either feel something or chuckle. And I thought, yeah, things like this would be fun to have about the house. Just, just little fun things. That's actually not the one I ordered. That's, that's wrong. It's supposed to be a bowler hat, a moustache and a pipe. And yeah. you're supposed to say gentleman's attire. A but fedora, that, a bowler and a top hat. I, you I'm, can't I'm not mad at that. Can't go wrong with the headwear I'm not there. Mad. Do you like it? Let me know. <laughs> Let's get the comment section going. Let's have a bit of a chat in there. Let's not break the pink. Oh, for people who are asking, the cups, uh, which obviously you see on Instagram, Prink Nash. <laughs> and in terms of the coffee, yes. So now I have my matching little bits and bobs. See, now this, this just makes me happy about life. How pretty is that? That does look very nice. That's very nice, that's pretty. That's that done. Storage, obviously working with Gymshark, we get a lot of product and sometimes that product just ends up splayed across the office floor and kind of gets disorganized. So, storage for what's current, what's gonna be going on. This is gonna be going in like the changing room so I can bring you guys fitting videos and stuff like that and I know what's about, what's coming up and time frame it so I'm too organised. Whenever you're taking pictures, so people always say like, how do you do Instagram photos, um, what editing do you use and things like that. A lot of the time, to make something a good edit, it's your environment has to start first. So if you're shooting somewhere crap, like in a toilet, it ain't gonna look good. Make your environments a little bit more pleasing to the eye just to look at them before you even take a photo in them. And with that in mind, as well as like, you know, necessity. Necessity, he says. Wait till you see it. <laughs> this is where they get a letter from me going, it was damaged on arrival. <laughs> oh, Jesus, where's the building? Oh, bloody hell, it's bigger than I thought. All right, cut back to us in a minute. one of my, my, my man purchases. So look, it's a lamp, but it's a freaking cool lamp. 
Why? Because I can put this next to sofas, it creates a nice scene, it's useful lighting to have, you know, I, and also it's an aesthetic thing to have in the shots. So my point is, if you're going to invest, invest in yourself, invest in your environment, and uh, it will make you happier, trust me. If you don't feel good where you are, change it. But if the change is worth doing, then you may as well do it right. And speaking of that, we're going to get back to the food and back to the diet. So macros. I told you I was going to start counting the macros and doing that. The thing you need to know, if I haven't put up a video of it, I haven't started it yet. And I intend to show you that. So if you haven't seen it on the video, I haven't started doing it. I think I am actually the living embodiment if, if it's not on film, it didn't happen. <laughs> Don't know if that's the best way to live. But macros. Mine are going to be 180 grams of protein. They're going to be 150 grams of carbs and 170 to 190 grams of fat. Now, the reason I'm doing that is fat is much more satiating and sustainable for me energy wise. When I was higher carb and lower fat, I'd have peaks and troughs of like energy and crash. And I also find that I snacked a lot more. Fat is more of a sustained release. And what that means is because my energy levels were kind of staying the same, my moods were better. I was getting less cranky because I was having less sugar crashes. So my blood sugar insulin levels, blood sugar levels, blood sugar insulin, yeah, Jesus, I ain't spoke about this for a while. Blood sugar levels, blood sugar levels, insulin levels, they were more balanced. More like this and less like this. So that's why I've gone high fat. It works for me. If you haven't tried it, I would recommend it. Um, if you're still high carb, what I'm about to say to you now is still going to apply. Can we just point out, right? I had the boys around the other week and um, my day's tasks do involve film food video, which mm -hmm. we're doing now. So we can tick that. Uh, photo edit take, we're gonna do that. So I can tick that. This is another good thing you can have is these board. Um, mow the grass, done. Island, get back out there to do the flights. I need to order that, so I've not done that yet. What, what was that next one? What's that next one? Gape on. Oh. Yeah. What, what have a, you... a stranger of my daily tasks that I don't remember putting on that board. What, what have you got planned for us to, today? On the... Yeah, well, this, this was in the later on this evening, it's going to get weird. <laughs> then after Gape on accounts, do, do the accounts, and then to finish the day off, a dick, a dick pic. I don't know whether I said oh, that dick pic? just to I, receive I one. I don't know what the pie. goal is there. Get one, receive one. Either way. Don't really want to tick that box. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure if we go through your DMs, we can probably see a couple of them, can't we? <laughs> no, no YouTube, no. A quick look at some of the top things I like for snacking on and then the daily things that I'm going to eat. So like Groundhog Day. So, <clears throat> light yogurts. These are kind of good for snacking on, not the best for your fat content. So when you want fat content, that's when you go with the organic creamy yogurts. So then you've got your options there. If you've got some carbs left, but you don't really want something fatty because you want the carb, which we'll talk about in a minute, what, when and why you want carbs. But then also I snack on these, not whole pots. Although I do have been known to eat full pots at the oh. time. Very difficult to pull back, aren't they? Yeah. I'm not one of those people that gets a bar, eats half of it and then wraps mm. it for later. For me, it's cherry yogurt. Yeah, mm. I can't be friends with those type of people. <laughs> cherry yogurt, you say? Cherry oh. yogurt. Hummus, great snack. Chickpeas, healthy, really nice, easy to buy, cheap to buy. Have that with some um, cream crackers. These are only five grams of carb per cracker. I have two crackers and I usually clear half a tub with two crackers on the scooper. Oh, right, that's where that goes. Cottage cheese, full fat cottage cheese. Put this into your eggs, game changer. Chocolate spread that's not Nutella, because just, you know, you can have more macros side things for meals so like you make a boring meal like how to make it a bit more exciting find something you like the flavor of that goes with lots of things for me beetroot beetroot it's such a northerner you are <laughs> is that, is that northern thing? pickle and beetroot <laughs> mate. eat that out of the jar i love it uh, but side note superfood superfood massively antioxidant that one so smops up those free radicals running in my body so tastes good and good for you uh, in terms of the meat things what i've been getting into super easy man meals like fillets but with a bit of bread on them so if i've got carbs not to spare i will just have those with the beetroot on the side if i do have carbs to spare then we bring in this british potato carrot and swede mash get these everywhere everyone has their own versions of them in the supermarkets they are super cheap to buy half a portion each time so that's two meals in one and per 100 grams of carb these little bad boys are only but per 100 carbs 12 12 whereas normal potato is around about 20 to 28, depending on whether you're in white or sweet. Mm. So that is an absolute winner. It's lower carb than a normal potato. It's super easy. Chuck it in the microwave, jobs are good. 
Uh, I only found this out recently, but it's become one of my new favorite, when I get home I can't be bothered to cook, but want protein and fat meals, and that is uh, smoked for barbecue ribs. All right. That's for Joe, like him. Rude, isn't it? Guess how much? Two quid. As if you knew that. Two pounds! Two, that's less than a sandwich! This is supposed to serve two people. So, in one pack of these, you will get 50 grams of fat, booyah! And protein, you will get 80 grams if you eat the whole thing. Mm. 80 grams of protein, that's And to be it. fair, if you wanted to cut out the sugar, you'd probably just leave the glaze. Yeah, and the glaze is separate inside, so yeah, very good point, sir. So there you go, I mean, you can split that into two, and you're getting 40 grams of protein, 25 grams of fat, and carbohydrates, 14. That's if you put the sauce on it. So you could even halve the sauce and only have seven grams of carb in that. And the sauce, trust me, you can halve it. It's thicker. Balls. Don't know balls are thick. <laughs> Learning a lot today. All this goes back in the fridge. So that's the fridge bit done. We'll do more in-depth food if you want it. If you want to do a gross hole, if you want full food, let me know in the comment section below. We'll do a full shop breakthrough. But that was just some of my handy hints and tips. Was there anything else I meant to tell you? Oh! Not yet, because we've got the next bit now, which is carb timings. And right now I'm gonna tell you how you can eat chocolate, peanut butter, sweets, biscuits, jelly babies, chocolate bars, and stay fit. Before we get into the food, just another quick one on hydration. So I'm using a lot of these double concentrated, no added sugar cordials, and as I said in one of the last videos, scully. If it's in front of you, you'll drink it. If it's not, you'll forget. So a little handy tint. Hint, 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 I nearly said handy tip then. No, no. <laughs> right, I promised you that you'd be able to eat cool stuff whilst training. Here's the reasons why. Stop thinking about food as what it says on the wrapper. As in, like, it's a chocolate bar, bad. It's a chicken breast, good. It's not true. Your body doesn't differentiate things like that. It doesn't have eyes. We have the eyes and we use these, but your stomach, your insides, all it does is break it down into its macros. That's the proteins, the carbs, and the fats. So everything we put in our face just gets broken down to those. Now, don't get me wrong. You've got nutrients alongside that you need, which is why it's better to have whole foods rather than processed nonsense. But the truth is, you could get really lean, really cut and really shredded eating McDonald's three times a day if you hit the macros that were towards that goal of fat loss. Just your insides would be dying, your skin would be crap, your hair would be crap, your nails wouldn't be growing. You get where I'm going with this. It is important to have a happy balance in your diet of whole foods plus stuff that makes you happy. And what I like to do is take the stuff that makes me happy, which is usually stuff that's full of sugar, and put that around times when I'm going to utilize that sugar rather than times when I'm sat down not using it. What does this mean in terms of training? It means we can have a hobnob, we can have some jelly babies, we can have some popcorn before we get to the gym, on our way to the gym, in the gym, and if really, directly afterwards as well. Because all they are is carbs, sugars, and fats. So around your workouts, is where you want to put in the predominant amount of your carbohydrates within your diet. Now this is assuming that you're not on some crazy high level of carbohydrate diet, in which case you still would want to do this, but you're gonna to have to use a specific type of carbohydrate. You wanna put really, really simple carbohydrates around your workout, like you could literally eat sugar before you went into the gym if you wanted, it wouldn't be great for your teeth. But what I'm saying is you want something that's really simple and gonna be really high impact because you're gonna to want to cram a lot of carb value into small volumes, whereas with me, I have less carbs to play with. I've only got 150 for the day. So I'm gonna put around about 80 grams, around about 50 before I go in and 30 during, or whack the whole load in before I go. What that's gonna do is it's going to put that glucose into my body and that's gonna help me, one, be energetic. It's gonna help me fuel that workout. Two, it's gonna help with the pump because the glucose binds the water, so as long as we're hydrated, it's gonna help volumize that pump. It's also probably, if you're eating something that's got a little bit of fat in it, like the hobnobs, you have a little bit of that fat with the sugars before you go in the gym, it's gonna make you look better in terms of vascularity and things like that. So not only are we eating cool stuff, it's gonna make us look better when in the gym, and also we're removing that trait of having guilt with food. And this is the big problem. A lot of people feel guilty when they're eating something that they think is bad. Whereas this way, if we start creating a mechanism of eating something bad, ooh, made a mess. Eating something fun before your workouts, but also eating something that you now know it's something that you used to think you couldn't have, now you're having it, but not only you're having it, it's helping you. So we're creating a positive connection to that food rather than a negative, and that is vitally important. 
just for mental health alone, but also in ways of creating better habits for yourself and learning about how foods work and understanding that nothing is bad, everything just needs to be controlled. My top choice is for this. Jelly babies, really simple, tasty, loaded with sugar. Downside of these, you don't get many for the volume. Popcorn, enjoyable, you get a lot of volume for the macro. So if you feel like eating a lot, you want something satisfying, popcorn, this is a great snack generally day to day as well, if you get the lighter versions. Apples, if you want to be a little bit healthy with it, these are a solid high impact source. Grapes, grapes are another great one. Dark chocolate, this is great for anti-fatigue, so if you want to tie this into your workouts, it is higher fat though, so you're going to have to have one of these squares alongside the carbohydrate choice. So that means you can have jelly babies with some dark chocolate. Want to mix them both up, then you've got the mixture of the both, so you can get yourself a dairy milk kind of style thing with some fruit and nut in it. Hobnobs, you dip them, and then you dip them again, and they're still with you. Hobnobs. Per biscuit, fat 4.5, carbohydrates 11. So you've got four and a half grams of fat and 11 carbs. That is all you need to think about when you're talking a hobnob. Do I have four and a half grams of fat left? Do I have 11 grams of carb? Yes, I do. Put a hobnob in your face. Per 100 grams of, of these jelly babies, you're going to get 78 grams of carbs. So if I was going to have my 80 grams of carbs before going to the gym, I could pretty much eat 100 grams of jelly babies. So I would only get kind of just over half of a bag of these and they're not that full. So if you're feeling like, you know, you don't want a lot of oil, you don't want a lot of things in your belly, maybe you're doing deadlifting that day or whatever, good choice. But it doesn't just apply to that. Outside of around your training, this is how you deal with snacks as well. This is how you look at your food for snacks. If someone says to you, you want some chocolate? Can't, I'm on a diet. Really? No, you can have it all the freaking time. You just can't have the whole bar. How much of your daily allowance are you willing to give up to have four pieces of that? But I wouldn't even have four pieces. I've had, I'd have two. And that's three and a half grams of fat and five and a half carbs for two pieces of that to have with my coffee. Happily, all day, every day, and I'll still reach my goals of losing weight. Now, if I'm gaining, that's a different story. Welcome to my intellectual zone. Before we start, show them the monkey. That's a monkey. Bulking. Right, here's a quick tip. Don't order a Domino's on top of your maintenance allowance and expect to stay lean while you're bulking. Ain't gonna happen because you're going too many calories over. Whenever you're bulking, you only need to be about 500 calories over your maintenance. It's enough. Make sure that maintenance includes cardio. Keeping cardio in is gonna keep you fitter. The fitter you are, the more of a machine your body is and it's gonna be able to deal with those extra calories in a good way. So keeping cardio in, you're gonna hopefully stay leaner as you grow easier. We want to only put on enough calories into the diet so that we can gain weight steadily. So again, it's an incremented system. We gain a bit of weight, we sit at it for a few days, make sure that average stays the same, and then only when that average of seven days stays the same from the last seven days do we then put the food up again. And so you staircase your way up. It's not this, it's this, yeah? That way, you're gonna stay leaner easier and you're going to look better for longer. And what I tend to do is, again, keep a bolster of the carbs around the workout and spread the fats through the day so that I'm more kind of stabilized throughout. That is my handy hints for bulking without becoming a behemoth. So we're not in the house anymore, we're at the gym. And we are about to go in and I'm gonna show you how I train. We're gonna do this raw, because I think a lot of you guys at the moment, obviously I put up things on Instagram for workouts and stuff. I, I kind of like it, but also I feel like it's getting a little bit kind of pretty. And by that I mean, it's all done to like music and people training and looking very kind of relaxed and rigid when they do it. That's not the case. Just like Instagram portrays like all these perfect lifestyles so that everyone now thinks perfect is normal and now normal is unacceptable, which is just not the fucking case, right? I'm gonna film this raw today. Talking about cardio, I'm gonna show you what I do and it's bag work. We're gonna go in and we're gonna do the bag work first. Then we're gonna go move on to the weights. Now, if I was gonna do a heavy lifting day, like a, a like I was going, say I was gonna go for a big deadlift or a big bench press, I wouldn't do the boxing before, but we're not gonna do that today. I'm gonna to show you my normal high frequency style training. This means getting shit done, including the boxing, in about an hour and 10 minutes. No boxing, I'm in and out of the gym in under an hour. And that means I keep myself moving, I'm doing three body parts, and we've talked about this before, high frequency training is where you train everything at least twice a week. But what you do is reduce the volume per session. So that's two exercises per body part, five sets per exercise, and we're going to be doing three body parts. Today, I'm going to go through the bag work with you briefly. Then we're going to go raw. Then we're going to come in, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to train. And then we're going to go raw so that you guys can see this shit is not easy. Jelly babies. Jelly babies. Let's go. So the jelly babies are in, that's pure sugar, no fats. 
What you don't want when you do cardio is kind of the fats floating around the stomach. You want those whilst you're a little bit of fat, not a lot. I'm talking like, you yeah, know, max 10 grams. Oh, damn it, we missed a little window of music. Anyways, I'll talk a bit louder. Um, so, jelly babies are in, that's going to fuel the carbs. Bag, we're going to be doing five rounds, three minutes, one minute's rest. The idea on this is not to kill the bag, just keep moving, throw light punches, every third or fourth punch, whip it in there, but then keep moving, moving, moving. Don't plant yourself and just throw, think about technique, think about rolling the hips, working that core, back and triceps. This is cardio that's going to build muscle and burn fat. That's rare. That's why you're not doing it. So I had the jelly babies before the boxing, but I only had around about 30 grams from the jelly babies. So now I'm going to get another 20 grams from a hot knob. That's two hot knobs, 22 grams of the carbs, but then like I told you, there's four and a half fats. So that'll give me nine grams of fat, that kind of 10 fat gram range that I want, 10 fat gram, 10 gram fat range that I want for when I go and hit the weights. And this should help me look a bit more vascular. And also, you know, I get to eat hot knobs. Where does it go? Oh, five. Okay, so I told you it's high frequency training, so today we're going to be hitting back, shoulders, and biceps. So we're already warm from doing the boxing, which is a brilliant thing. It's going to help with that mobility if you're really rolling with the shots. Now we're going to hit these. So we're going to be two exercises for each body part, five sets, and I'm going to be hitting that eight to 12 rep range. What I'm looking for here is control. I'm looking for negative tension as well. There's a big thing a lot of people miss out is that negative part of the rep. So fight the negatives, contract on the positives, and keep that movement going. I'm going to be going from body part to body part. So I'm not going to be doing two back, then two bicep, and then two shoulder. I'm going to be going back, bicep, shoulder, back, bicep, shoulder. Five sets completed of each before moving on to the next one. Or if you're in a time rush, you can do them superseted. But what we're going to do now, a little bit of pretty shit, but we're going to roll. I want to see and feel the pain of this. Yeah? Cool. Come on! Uh. 
Hold it. Come on. We're gonna break you. Go down. Ah. One, two, three. Four. Uh. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Work. Hard oh, down. Pick it up. Oh. Oh. Come on now. One, two, three. Oh. Uh, ah, you will not quit. Two. Oh, ah. oh two more for me, a bitch. Come on. Ooh. All day. All day. Six. Fish. Fish shot. Fish shot. There you go, shut out the door and done and dusted. Hour, was it hour 15 did we say? Hour 15. Hour 15, that was a little bit of fuckery to get some pictures and um, waiting for the old bit of here and there kit. So there's no messing around. You do this, like I said, you can superset like we did there. I actually decided to superset in the end because that was the mood I was in. And plus we wanted to get this done in a set time frame. And uh, this pace keeps you going, but there's no excuses to be lazy because you're switching from body part to body part meaning that the one you're not using because you're doing three is getting rested which means when you fire from the two you've just done to the fresh one you're good to go no need for that minute sitting around getting yourself psyched none of that bullshit straight in and freaking work everything when it comes to gaining progressing all it is is stimulus stimulus ranges of motion technique and just not, not, not none of this in between sets i preach people skimming through stuff on their phone then they put their phone down and then they begin the rest it's ridiculous how do you expect to get anywhere if you're not pressuring the body if you're not keeping that focus and keeping that pace when you're in the gym go in there to work and that's it and hopefully i've shown a little bit of that a little bit different i hope you like if you like that view if you like this kind of rawness let us know we'll keep it up i quite enjoy it because it means less setting up and i can actually get on with proper workouts uh, what you don't know is a lot of people will come in and film a workout which they'll show you on youtube then they go back and do their proper one i don't want to show you that i want to show you that this shit's tough and rough and, uh, and fun and still fun yeah oh and by the way uh -huh. first stuff that you saw that I was wearing is the new onyx from gymshark that nice like trony looking super aquamani thing that'll be out soon i'll let you know when and until then if you like any of that stuff and you want to help out your boy links are in the description that directly helps me helps support the channel and i appreciate all of you that do it and also when you do do it message me send me a dm show me you've done it i'll give you a little a little booyah back to say thank you all the time always uh, I appreciate you. Uh, if you haven't already, please, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any videos. And stay tuned because there's some big feature videos coming up your way. I have three big announcements to tell you when COVID releases so that we can actually get on with them. And uh, the future's bright. Future's all in? Future's hobnobs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out of here.